All right, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for your patience as we work through today's events. My name is Kevin Best. I'm the Senior Director of Media Relations here at Chapel Hill. We have a number of folks here with us, and a few of them will take uh, a few of your questions and discuss today's incident. We have University of North Carolina Chancellor Kevin Guskowitz, UNC Chief of Police Brian James, Chapel Hill Police Chief Salisa Lehew, Orange County Sheriff Charles Blackwood, Commander Freddie L. Johnson, Jr. of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, Secretary Eddie Buffalo, Jr. of the North Carolina Department of Public Safety, Special Agent in Charge Bob DeWitt of the FBI, Orange County District Attorney Jeff Neiman, and UNC Board of Trustees Chair David Bullock, Jr. We know there'll be a lot of questions and we'll take a few, but please understand this is an ongoing investigation and questions will be limited. We'll start with Chancellor Guskowitz. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, today. Uh, this is truly a, a tragic day for our campus community. Uh, Chief James will give uh, more details on the ongoing investigation, but uh, this afternoon, shortly after 1 p.m., uh, UNC police uh, were notified of shots being fired in Cottle Laboratories uh, on our uh, campus. Uh, the suspect was eventually apprehended and is now in custody. I'm grieved to report that one of our faculty members uh, was killed in this shooting. This loss is devastating and uh, the shooting damages the trust and safety that we so often take for granted uh, in our campus community. We will work to rebuild that sense of trust and safety uh, within our community and our hearts uh, are, are with the family of our fellow faculty member, those who are personally uh, connected to the victim and those traumatized uh, by this senseless act of violence. In response, uh, we have canceled classes for the rest of today uh, and have canceled classes for tomorrow. Uh, we've sent uh, an email with resources for our students, faculty, and staff. Uh, more information will be provided on additional services for our campus community. I'm grateful to our Emergency Operations Center, UNC Police, for managing this situation so effectively and keeping our community safe. I'm also grateful to our faculty, staff, and students for their effective cooperation uh, during uh, this event today. Uh, it's why we uh, have an emergency action plan with an active shooter uh, protocol that's practiced regularly and because uh, of that uh, uh, this uh, situation uh, played out uh, uh, as best as we could have asked, asked for today. I hope that you'll join me in praying uh, for the victim, uh, the victim's family, and every member of our Carolina community. And I encourage our community to come together during this difficult time. I'm now going to turn it over to Chief James to give you additional details on what happened today uh, and his department's impressive response in keeping the rest of our campus safe. And I also want to thank uh, the other law enforcement agencies, many of whom are here today, uh, for the role that they played in keeping our community safe. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Brian James. I'm the Chief of Police for the UNC Police Department. I thank you for being here this evening. And thank you, Chancellor Guskowitz. I also want to offer my sympathy to the victim in this incident and express my empathy to the entire UNC and Chapel Hill community. I'm very sorry to be standing before you today in these circumstances. It's a day we train for, but we hope it never comes. I know there will be a lot of questions as we try to answer as many as possible, but please understand this is an ongoing investigation and there are many questions that we will not have the answers to at this time. I want to start by confirming, as the Chancellor did, we do have the suspect in custody from today's active assailant incident. At this time, we are not releasing the, formal, the, the name of the suspect as formal charges have not yet been filed. We are committed to conducting a thorough investigation and we will provide as many updates throughout the process as we can. The FBI, is providing assistance with multiple resources, including victim assistance and the evidence response team. The caudal lab, which is the location of the incident, will be closed until further notice, notice as evidence is being processed. We want to ensure that we gather every piece of evidence to determine exactly what happened here today and why it happened. It is too early in this investigation to know a motive for the shooting we will be working with all the law enforcement agencies you see represented here to uncover every fact available. That will take time, 
So we ask in the meantime that you continue to express your warm thoughts to the UNC Chapel Hill community. This investigation will continue for several weeks, but here's what we know right now. UNC police received a 911 call at 1.02 p.m. this afternoon reporting shots fired at Caudill Laboratory located on South Road in the, uh, near the center of campus. An emergency alert Carolina was issued and the emergency siren sounded at 1.04 p.m. notifying campus of the emergency and issuing a lockdown. Upon arrival at Caudill Labs, police discovered one individual, a faculty member, had been shot. Unfortunately, as we have reported, this person is deceased. We will not be releasing further details on that person at this time as we are working to contact all of this person's family and will be providing them with support and resources. This is the only fatality and no other injuries were reported. Based on witness information at the scene, UNC police were able to identify a suspect and after a search of the surrounding area, this suspect was taken into custody at 2.31 p.m. The lockdown of the campus remained while police verified the suspect's identity and conducted a comprehensive search for the weapon that was used in the, in the shooting, which at this time has not been located. I want to thank all the law enforcement agencies who responded to, to assist today. Their assistance was invaluable and we could not have responded so quickly or so thoroughly without their help. So at this time, I'll turn it back over uh, to Kevin, and uh, I guess we'll yeah. take any questions. Yeah, at this time, like I said earlier, and like she said, we'll have a few questions that we can take. Obviously, ongoing investigation, only so many things that can be uh, discussed. But if you have a question, please raise your hand. I'll point to you and identify yourself and then ask your question. So here's the left. Stephen Schlink, UNC's Carolina Week. We know that there's a car in the new Venable parking lot. Um, police did confirm to us that that, is, that does have some sort of correlation to this event. Can you all speak to what kind of correlation that has to this? Uh, yes, a, a car was identified. We do uh, think that it is related to the investigation. Uh, as we said, we are still in the process of collecting evidence and conducting interviews, so I'm really not prepared at this time to say exactly what uh, the connection is, but we uh, do have that car. Uh, identified as a, uh, a piece of possible evidence. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, front row here. Black. Yeah, so um, we heard from talking to students that um, they were they had confusion during the day because um, between the time that you said the suspect was apprehended and the time that the all clear went out, that was about two hours, and students were being um, evacuated from some buildings before then um, and said that they weren't really sure what to do next. Can you speak to Yes, so once the suspect uh, was identified and apprehended, we still had to ensure that this was the correct person. So there was an identification process. We did not want to uh, put that information out at that time because we weren't sure. Also, we were receiving a number of calls around campus about uh, possibly uh, having other victims. Uh, there were a couple of other calls about possible gunshots. So we had to ensure that the entire uh, campus was safe. So we had a number of officers that were on the ground doing an entire sweep uh, of that area, also searching all the adjacent buildings. So we wanted to be sure that we, um, that, that the campus was in fact all clear uh, before we issued that. So that's why there was the, the lapse in time. We just wanted to be sure that we uh, had that person in custody and it was the correct person. Okay, back row. Yeah, can you uh, tell us the suspect that you member was killed? Um, were they known to each other? Did they ever work together as a potential student? We don't know that information at this time. That will hopefully be uncovered through uh, interviews of the uh, suspect as well as uh, any witnesses that may be available. Chancellor Deskowitz, this is the second week of school. We've got new students on campus, returning students, and families all across the country are worried. What's your message? This is really a time for the community to come together and uh, these tragic events sadly are happening across our nation 
and uh, again, it's it's why we prepare uh, and, and uh, you know talk about a sense of community. And so right now, uh, that's what my thoughts and prayers uh, are, are with uh, obviously the victim and his. Uh, the, the, the victim's family uh, and friends and colleagues and students who uh, are part of that department. And uh, so we, we hope our students will access the resources that we're making available and, and come together uh, uh, in, in, a, in a really important way for the campus right now. News and Observer, uh, can, you, uh, can you tell us about how the suspect was apprehended and where exactly he was apprehended? Were there any tips that came in? Were there any reports? So we did a, a comprehensive search of campus as well as surrounding areas. So at this point, uh, I am not prepared to say how he was apprehended, uh, but we are sure uh, that it's him, and we were able to verify that. The background, right? Uh, I spoke with several students, one of them, and this is for Chancellor. She had said that the faculty had essentially told the students to make personal decisions on what to do next. She had said that uh, she had hidden in a closet, a lot of people their parents saying goodbyes. I know you had mentioned that there is an active shooter uh, kind of protocol put in place, um, but it seems that some of that maybe got lost in confusion today. And I know this is a scary kind of incident, but what is that protocol? And uh, again, they were told that they needed to make a personal decision. Uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with how the, the uh, protocol was carried out today. Uh, I had a chance to go over along with the provost and others to talk with uh, the faculty who, who were there in the building uh, at the time of the shooting uh, and some of the students and they're certainly traumatized but uh, I, I want to commend uh, those who were in the building uh, ensuring that uh, they were doing every everything possible uh, to ensure the safety of those students and, and faculty and staff that were in the building. So uh, again even the best laid plans as you know in protocol sometimes they don't uh, play out as you'd like to but I'm, I'm very pleased with what we know at this point. We'll have an opportunity to review that, uh, learn from the investigation and uh, questions that are being asked, and certainly uh, put improvements to that if, if need be. So. Back left. Yes, how helpful is it to have the suspect alive? Well, we certainly uh, want an opportunity to interview the suspect, uh, if that's possible. And uh, to actually have the suspect in custody it gives us an opportunity to figure out the, the why uh, and, and even the how, and also helps us to uncover uh, a motive and, uh, and, and really just why this happened today. Why today? Why at all? Uh, and we want to learn from this incident, and we will certainly work uh, to do our best to ensure that this never happens again on the UNC campus. And I think that uh, that information that we could glean from the suspect is, is very important as we move forward. you're looking for a weapon is it a firearm do you know what type of firearm is it too early to tell if the suspect has legally obtained a firearm we are looking for a firearm uh, it is too early to determine if the firearm was legally obtained and um, not prepared at this time to, to say exactly uh, what kind of weapon it was Back row middle. and there were reports uh, earlier this afternoon about possibly some other suspect being taken into custody was that an error and <coughs> Yes, yeah, so there was uh, uh, another person that was detained, and we determined very quickly that that was not, in fact, the suspect. Here in the second row. Uh, Hi, uh, can you tell me what criteria led to that arrest and then let go of that first initial suspect and why that mistake was made or how, if you have any insight on that? That was based on uh, just the description that we were given of the suspect and that person being in close proximity of the incident. I know you said you guys are uh, looking to speak to the suspect to try to ascertain the motive, but is there anything that you can share at this time as to you know what might have led to this? We really don't know until we speak with the suspect. Um, that, that's just that's my best answer I can give you now. Uh, we, we we really do want to know the why in, in this case and what led to it. All right, this certainly won't be the last uh, update we have. So we'll only take a few more questions over here in the left. The okay, so we have some students right here. In front of the First of all, um, I'm sorry because I know so many of you are feeling uncertain about your safety right now. And uh, again, 
Uh, we have very good protocols in, in place. Uh, there's nothing more important uh, on our campus uh, than the, the safety and well-being of our community members and certainly our uh, nearly 30,000 students uh, are, are at the top of that list alongside our faculty and staff. So uh, we're here for you. I, I, I'm pleading with you to use any of the resources uh, that, uh, that you may need and uh, we'll come together as a community to ensure your uh, safety uh, and the safety of anyone who visits our campus here in Chapel Hill. So we have an emergency action plan and active shooter training is part of that. And so uh, we, uh, about a year ago, uh, we uh, rolled out a, a, a program by which, and I'm going to ask uh, Chief James to say a little bit more about it, uh, along with Daryl Jeter, who I know is, uh, does an incredible job of running uh, our, emergency, uh, op uh, our emergency operations center. And uh, there are uh, specific guidelines provided uh, to faculty uh, for uh, the specific classrooms and, and laboratories in terms of how to go about doing this. Now, uh, it's uh, every classroom, every laboratory, uh, every auditorium is, is slightly different in terms of how you would uh, lock down a facility, but uh, we, we're doing the very best that we can. And again, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that uh, our Emergency Operations Center uh, took this very seriously, uh, learning from some of the uh, tragedies that have happened on other campuses, and uh, we, we, we all have to learn from one another. Uh, but uh, Chief may want to say a little bit more about the specifics. So the, the primary purpose of the emergency action plan was to ensure that every uh, faculty member as well as student or staff uh, understood what to do in a case like this, such as uh, an emergency lockdown or an active shooter. Uh, another layer that we've done uh, from the University Police Department, we've done a number of security surveys across campus to find out how to better uh, secure various buildings on campus. As you know, uh, the, the buildings range in age on this campus. Uh, and so each building can be very unique in how you actually lock it down. So it was important that every member uh, of, of the organization of UNC assigned to those various buildings understands how to lock down a classroom or, or any type of, uh, of structure that they're in and, and know where the, the best places are to go in case of a lockdown. So we've worked very diligently to ensure that that information is out there and we'll continue uh, to work on those efforts. All right, thank you everybody. Like I said, we'll have more information uh, throughout the next few days, but uh, thank you everybody for coming and we'll have updates as we have.